Welcome to Chill Time with Jose, the CSGO show we all to know. And first off, you know, this week's been kind of crazy for CSGO. Really, really crazy. There's been so many games. There's been Flashpoint, ESL Miners, and that's still going to go on as well. And what else? What else? I'll be casting today. I'll be casting today as well, just in case you guys wonder. I'll be casting the ESL CIS Miners today as well. I'll be casting both BO3s until I go to bed. Alerts were off. No, no, no. It didn't come up in general in the alerts. And we're going to talk about, there's a lot, been a lot of games here, MDL, ESL, Flashpoint. There's also been a lot of moves as well. And we're going to talk about the moves first of all, which is going to be unfortunate. I, and I, I am, I'm upset that I've seen this, but I'm not surprised. You get what I mean? You know, obviously I'm seeing this, but I'm not surprised. So if you guys don't know that poor Hunting got benched, okay? G'day Danny G. So Hunting got benched, I'm not surprised. Like Hunting stats, like Hunting, great IGL, but his stats... They were the worst in the tier one, tier two scene, if you guys didn't know. And it was a it was a bound to happen, pretty much. It was a bound to happen. How's everything been going, Danny G? How's the team been going here? You guys thinking you can get the top four top four into the MDL for the Roosters? Top four AU? Because it's actually really, really tight this year. Very, very tight. Where teams like all oh, like, you know, three or four losses. And I could go anywhere. You go to bed and I just wake up at 6.30 a.m.? Yeah, pretty much. I'll be going to bed at about probably 4, 4 or 5 a.m. today. But I'll talk about Hunter getting benched here. I'm not surprised that this happened. Like, I'm really not surprised this happened at all. Hunter wasn't playing very well. Like, just want to qualify for a LAN? Okay. So that means you don't, you don't have to have qualify for a LAN, Danny. G. Oh, yeah, you want to go to... That's right. ESO, ANZ gets you to a LAN. But I don't think MDL gets you to a LAN unless you win the entire thing to the Global Challenge. But will you get to a land, though? That's the big question. Because I don't think you guys have qualified yet, have you? For the ESL, AU, NZ. That's also been going on as well, but I'm not going to cover it that much. I completely forgot the pages for it as well. Sorry, guys. I'm just talking to the guys in my chat if you guys are on YouTube at the moment. So, um, you know, basically, Hunden got benched. People were surprised about the timing to it because the EU miners are in two days. And it's going to be kind of crazy to pick up a new IGL or they're going to have Hunden play out the EU minor because Hunden has been registered for it. So they can't exactly switch players in the middle of this minor. And um, people think it'll be after Flashpoint and other stuff like that because Hunden's stats are pretty bad. Hunden, you know, he's been developing a lot of Danish players into the stars they are now. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, he's just dropped off, you know, basically since he's just old now. Reaction's a bit slow. He had that appendicitis appendicitis during DreamHack winter the quality is there where they had to delay the game for next week between the flames and they were tricked back then before they called bad lines but that was crazy that was crazy because i was asking the flames i'm like going this is this is before i even knew about hunting flames like oh why do you guys not play last night and the flames like oh hunting had an appendicitis i'm like what yeah yeah he had appendicitis so we delayed the game for next week so this is me talking to the flames because I was like going, because the Flames made that incredible white run in DreamHack Winter, where they went from open qualities to close qualities finals, and it was just insane. And I was hoping they'd get into DreamHack Winter so I'd score a free shirt, because that's what they promised. They said, if we get into DreamHack Winter, you'll be getting a free shirt to me, because I casted all their games through the qualities. Like, I, I was up to 5am casting all the open qualifying games until they made it to close qualities, then casted all their close qualification games as well. And, you know, I had to go to bed because I'd worked the next day because the last day of qualifications was on Sunday. And they were like, oh, yeah, we didn't play it. But I couldn't cast on Thursday because it started at midnight my time. So that's what happened there. But, you know, Hunter, he's been through a lot. And this is, you know, not surprised, okay? Like, Hunter's stats has been lacking. He's been, he's been, in, the, he's been in the team for so such a long time. And, you know, Peacemaker thinks it's done. Hunter's going to be benched. Um, I reckon they can get an IGL. But the problem is, where, where's the IGL going to come from? Like, a lot of the IGLs are already locked up in teams. And Hunden said he's going to stay on. Like, this was planned. This move was planned. Just in case you guys think it's crazy, it's planned. No, I did not get the jersey because the Flames lost to Tricked. So Tricked beat the Flames to make it to uh, DreamHack Winter. Just in case you're wondering, Michael. They uh, Tricked won 2-0 against the Flames. Um, well, Mad Lions now. Mad Lions won 2-0 against the Flames. Um, so basically, this is, it's pretty sad. You know, it's pretty sad. People thought he got benched, but no, it's actually Hunden just benching himself. Hunden said he wasn't performing up to the role, and he was just going to bench himself. This is what leads them to believe that they're going after Cillian from the Flames, which is quite 
interesting that they've gone, you know, they're going to go for after Exilion now. Since Contact Gaming were going after Exilion as well, but they stopped the interest in Exilion because what would happen is that if Contact Gaming acquired Exilion, they'll lose their major spot. Therefore, they didn't go for it. So, you know, pretty much at the moment, they're going after Exilion as well, Mad Lions. And I reckon Exilion will be definitely a good pickup because Exilion, he can frag out. Very aggressive player, kind of like Hunden. And, you know, obviously on stats, he's better than Hunden. And, you know, that'll, that'll be a very, very good pickup for um, tr uh, for Mad Lions. Also, Cillian has played with Rory before. And I think he's even played with Aiko or Sejush before. So, he, you know, he's played with some of these players before as well. So, you know, you know, doesn't need, he doesn't need to have, you know, all his teammates get used to his system. And also, most of the Danes well, pretty much have the system to begin with. Like, they're all trying to emulate Astralis to somewhat here. So it shouldn't be that bad here. A lot of people thinking that, you know, basically he got benched. He didn't get benched at all. Also, if you guys noticed here. Lenny has visa problems. They have to replace him. Oh my God, does Intel really have... Oh. Dude, that's terrible. No, no, I was no trend. As you see here, there's no more gambling ads. If you don't know why here, there's no more gambling ads. Is that HLTV got acquired by... A news agent, a news, I think a news org, and they realized they cannot have gambling ads here for Australia. Like Australia has strict gambling provisions, and that they, they always had skin gambling here. And I'm like sitting there going, like, you know, why haven't these been taken down yet? Because they're illegal in Australia. So they finally took them down. So if you guys have been noticing your HLTV, there's been no betting stuff here or pop-ups here. It's because the fact is it's, it's illegal in Australia to have those. Uh the free work thing, uh you know, I could go really be inspiration for it, but I think, you know, I don't want to put my to put a dog in that fight yet. Like, you know, I did I did already tweet about being I worked I work a lot in free casting. I only got fifty bucks AU and that was from the Kibanja uh shit, Luco. And they gave me fifty bucks for casting two BO freeze, where I casted uh, High Legion V Phoenix and I think casted Namiga V Phoenix, I believe. Or Namiga V another team. I think it might have been Hard Legion. And I oh know it was Namiga V Phoenix. Then Hard Legion v Phoenix. And that's what I casted while I was there. So, you know, sad for Hunden. Very, very sad for him, you know. So, because, you know, Hunden, you know, I've casted him through Advanced as well. Because I remember when Trips got through Relegation to get into the MDL. Because I was casting them. And I'm trying to think. I think Trips had to go through Relegation in the end. Because they didn't win the MDL. Because Movie Star Riders won the MDL that, um, won the Advanced that year. Sorry, Advanced. And, you know, basically I was following Trips' way to Advanced. And... Basically, Tricks fought through a very tough relegation bracket. I took down the Zarko Boars and got into the top bracket and won through relegation. Now, next up is, you know, this is unfortunate. You know, Hunden, he does he does so much. He had all the talent ripped under, under him as well for previous teams. Like, basically, the Australia is what it is now. Basically, Hunden lost three of those players, and they got Device and Glaive, I think it was. I know it was Hunden with Device. But there was a lot of players from Australia that were under Hunden's, you know, Tutelage basically, and then Astralis came out. Got, they they picked up Glaive, and basically Hunden had his entire team ripped fr from under him. And he's been through quite a lot, and it's just it's sad to see him not be able to you know get a win there for his team. But he's still upbeat about it. He's saying you know I'll just go into more of a management role, go into management of CS:GO, maybe even become a coach as well. Given that he's he's led so many teams from you know the dumps to basically tier one, tier two status, I think he'd be a good role in coach. And you know good luck to him. Good luck to him. Now we're going to get to the next article, which is Envy. So basically, Flashpoint have been having a bit of trouble trying to get more finding teams, and they've picked up Envy here. I reckon Envy is pretty much an all right pickup. You know, they got they do have Mihu, Mihu being a very, very good Polish player. And they do have Moose, who's one of the up-and-coming NA players. Very, very clutch Moose. I do remember from E United, Rise Nation, all those guys as well. Calx I haven't seen in quite a long time, and Leisure, you know, I'm not familiar with him as well. And of course, there's Nifty from Envy, but I don't think Nifty is like a top tier author anymore. Uh, there's a lot of authors that are much better than Nifty. So I think Envy is a bit of a so-so pick, but you know, a, a team is a team. And I, I feel this league is going to be very, very competitive. Not because there's not tier one teams stacked into it. It's because it's going to be very, very good battles between tier two teams as well. And I think Flashpoint could that be could be that supplement where MDL is gone, but Flashpoint continues basically. And I think that's what it should do is that you know they should have you know MDL, MDL ends, postseason begins, then Flashpoint starts, and Flashpoint postseason, then back to MDL again to really give a lot of people's you know a lot of CS:GO action and stuff like that. But I'm very sure the orgs, ESL, and Face It, and all that stuff, and Flashpoint, they won't play nice. I think they'll try to you know basically sabotage these competition 
and you know forwards arguments here and therefore and vice versa it's kind of obvious that those kind of things are probably going to occur and you know i won't be surprised if those do occur in the end because um forwards get gets anger at esl esl do stuff to you know you know flashpoint vice versa these orgs fighting you know it's it's business as usual teams are trying to get you know oh you want to go to this tournament oh you want to go to this tournament even the minor you know even the minors are clashing with flashpoint as well but fortunately none of the teams in flashpoint are affected because most of them are in the close colleagues performing later and stuff like that as well really strange contact is the only org that is cs cdl over and every other org picked one league okay i don't really mind i think contact must have a lot of money overwatch league i'm not sure how long that's going to stay for to be completely honest and call of duty league I'm not sure how that's going to go either. They're just fledgling little organizations at the moment. But I got to CSGO because they probably have the money for. So a lot of teams do have various areas that they go into. I, 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 it's just strange that, you know, Contact's probably like one of the unique ones where they have, you know, errors in all of those three leagues. But I don't think it's a bad issue because some teams do have, you know, a league team as well. Like, for example, Forza, Na'Vi, and a few other teams, Invertus Pro, have a CSGO team, then a Dota 2 team. And some of the teams also have League of Legends team as well, which Cloud9 does. You know, a lot of these orgs do have teams and like, you know, MOBAs and stuff like that. So I don't think it's, you know, that bad that they have different uh, orgs and FPSs as well. Like they have Fortnite teams, even though that's pretty much dying out. Like they have a lot of, you know, different esports teams. So I don't think it's unusual for an org to have multiple teams in multiple leagues for different games. So Envy... Well, just in case you guys were wondering, he was uh, um, the chat was asking whether Contact Gaming, you know, what's my thoughts of uh, Contact Gaming being in CS, Call of Duty, and Overwatch League, and stuff like that. And other orgs picked one league, like NRG, 100 Fees, LG, Luminosity Gaming, and... Oh, I forget who MSF is. Anyways, fuck that. So basically, NV have joined in. So now there's uh, seven teams, Dignitas, Abandoned Brazil, Contact, NV, Gen G, Mad Lions, and Cloud9. So those are the founding members. They're still looking for free founding members and have two teams for the qualifiers. I am not 100% sure if they're going to get the free teams needed. And if they're going to get the free teams needed, I don't think it's going to be any of the tier one teams that they expect because ESL has confirmed that all the teams invited to Pro League have accepted the invites. Nature didn't think Coda's profit. Okay, MSF is Misfits. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to figure if MSF was and I'm going, Miss? Nah, I'm not sure. But, you know, Envy here, there's still three slots left to buy in for two mil. I don't see many orgs having the two mil that is. Everyone every in the tier two scene and tier one scene aren't exactly that rich. I could see Furia entering it, but Furia has already signed up with ESL Pro League. And I'm actually kind of surprised they have not approached Big and a few of the other orgs as well. And I guess Big must have knocked it back because Big would definitely be a smashing, like, org to get in here. But, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. And Envy has invested into Flashpoint. I'm not sure what other big orgs will go into here, to be honest. They haven't snagged any of the Russian orgs, such as Forza, but Forza's already accepted the ESL Pro League invite. And maybe contact Spirit, because Spirit's a pretty good big Dota 2 org as well. And Spirit is also, you know, a big CSGO org as well. B can't afford it? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I wrote it, I know. Maybe contact Spirit, because Spirit's definitely a big Dota 2 team. You know, definitely a big Dota 2 team. I'm trying to think of other, you know, teams they can even approach at this point because it's getting to the point where teams are running ra out rapidly. Next up is going to be, well, they've, re they've released, talk about ESL Pro League. They've released the groups now since all the teams have accepted their invites. And here's the brackets, by the way, guys. So for group A, group B, group C, group D. So they've changed the groups now. So there's basically six teams in one group and they don't have, you know, my regional groups and stuff like that. So group A, they got Strahls, Vitality, Nip, Ants, Godsent, Sharks. You obviously know who's going home. Do you want me to highlight who's going home? These guys. Anyone below the top two teams are going home. Nip might have a shot to um to dethrone Vitality. But that's about it. Like I don't see Sharks, Godsent. Even though they do have a good team, I don't think I don't see anyone, you know, overthrowing the top two teams here, to be honest. Group A is bullshit. Spirit, I'm sure, but they'd be in it. Okay, yeah, I can Spirit will be in it, because Spirit definitely, they've got the money, they've got the Mueller. I know Spirit has the Mueller, because they're a big Dota 2 team, and they can always splash it on CSGO. Given that a CSGO team is really fucking good as well. Like, I do enjoy watching CS, uh, Spirit's CSGO team. 
Group A is bullshit. Astralis and Vitality will easily go through, to be honest. Like, they got they got good RNG. Let's just call it that way. They got good RNG on their group. You know, Ants is going to be a joke. Nip probably going to be the only team really threatening either Astralis or Vitality. Ants, Gods, and Sharks, they're literally fighting for the bottom, basically. And I think Ants will get bottom because Ants is one of these teams that should not be in here. They are not like the others. Ants are a tier 2 team. Okay, they, they may, maybe even less. Maybe even less, but they are not a tier 1 team. And they're going to be bottom of the group. Next up, we're going to go to Group B, which is Na'Vi, Fnatic, Fury, Heroic, Complexity, and Forze. If Forze don't get their shit together, they'll be bottom of the group. Everyone else will beat them. Complexity, Heroic, Fury, Fnatic, Na'Vi, name them. They'll beat them. Because Forze did not look good. <laughs> they, they looked good in the first round of Minos, winning that you know first one 2 nothing, And then they get 2 swept quickly by, I think it was... I'm trying to think who it was who swept them 2 nothing. I think it was... Hard uh, Legion. Heroica tier 2 as well, but Heroica playing better than what Forze are at the moment. And Forze are barely playing you know, tier 2, and Heroica just above that, and it's looking quite ugly, to be honest. It's looking really, really ugly for Forze at the moment. If Forze can win out in the lower bracket to get into the minors, maybe, 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 maybe. But at the moment, you know who they'll verse in the minors in the final round? They versed a winner of Prosto, so they might be versing Prosto who got eliminated first in the lower bracket, versus Forze, and that's going to be a game to watch as well. Zeus's esports organization versus the biggest uh, esports org in Russia, so that'll be an interesting matchup if that does occur. I am trying to get that one. I'm trying to get that matchup, but I'm very, very sure that ESL are going to pick that one up very, very quickly. Oh, they're not. Wow, I just, they're not maybe? I'm not sure what ESL are doing. Hopefully they're not. Nah, don't worry about it. I I, I was looking at something. Like, I was like looking at the thing at HLTV on another screen, thinking they didn't they didn't pick it. But nah, okay, I have no idea. I have no idea actually. How many qualities are there? Two or three. Basically, it's eight spots. So the winners of the BO3 is last night went through, and the winners of the second L lower bracket will go through as well. Oh, how many qualify here? I think it's gonna be free, I reckon. So let's go to group let's go to group C here. Mouse, Liquid, 100 Fees, Virtus Pro, Renegades, and Boom. This is the most stacked group, probably in the entire thing. Actually, maybe not actually. There's another stacked group. But this is one of the stacked groups in here where four teams have a chance of qualifying. Which will be Mouse Force, Liquid, 100 Fees, and Renegades. Wait, you think Virtus Pro are gonna qualify? Ahahaha! <laughs> no, Renegades gonna qualify, okay? Just kidding, of course. I think it's going to be Mouse Sports Liquid and 100 Thieves. Probably will qualify. They're probably fighting for a qualification spot. I don't see VP or Renegades or Boom getting very far. Boom is basically ints, just in case you guys are wondering. Um, C is pretty stacked, actually, because VP and Renegades are on the cusp, you know, of the, you know, fighting each other. And Mouse Sports Liquid and 100 Thieves, like, all even at the moment. And I reckon, you know, if v VP or Renegades take a game of one of the top three... It could really make an interesting standings at the end of the ESL Pro League group. Like a real interesting standings where, you know, tie breaks will start to matter and stuff like that. Because I reckon there could be a three-way tie break, even a four-way tie break at the top. And they'll be like absolutely massive. Last one, we got G Group D, which is G2, Evil Geniuses, FaZe, OG, North, and Tyloo. OG won't be making it through. North won't be making it through. Tyloo will definitely not be making it through. I'm probably wrong here, but as word ends is breaking out, I'm probably wrong. Because EG and Dog and OG, or well, EG at least, but EG is better than OG by miles. OG just don't have the firepower, basically. And I'm going to see how many teams will cover it. Let's just see. Group A v Group B winner. And, well, Group C versus Group D winner. Okay, cool. So I can't find, like, what it is. I think, I guess, uh, I'm not sure what even goes on. I'm not sure how it's going to go on here. So, okay, so yeah, here we go. Each group featured best three matches round robin from which winners will advance to a play-in for a better playoff seeding, and while second, third will advance to a round of 12. So the top three of all teams will go in, basically. And there'll be, like, a team who'll go straight to the quarterfinals, and, like, it'll be a best of 16, as per se, and then they'll verse each other. And I'm not sure how it's going to go, but the top teams will fight for seeding, basically. I think they just get an extra playoff spot instead. I'm going to check my phone quickly. Anyways, all good, all good, all good. What was the guy... Message me back about the crash. So I'm going to say now, like, I can see that which team's going to go through. I think, I think Astralis v. Na'Vi 
is going to be very interesting because Navi will top their group and Astralis will top their group. And it'll lead to a very epic BO3. I did not get a chance to watch Flashpoint at, at all. And then it'll be probably be, um, I'd say 100 fees for G2, I reckon, for Group C, Group D for the top. But we're going to go to the next article. So it's a Pro League, I'm going to say, you know, pretty interesting system. All the, all the games will be BO3s, by the way. Every single game will be a BO3 in ESL Pro League, which will be actually quite exciting. Complex and OG will actually be a good match. It will be a good match. But, you know, the consequences of it mattering is very, very slim. Like, very, very slim. Like, in the scheme of things. Be very, very slim. Because, like, I don't think both teams, like, you know, in the scheme of things, when you've got, like, Evil Geniuses G2 and FaZe, like, you know, it, it would be a fun match to watch. But it's like... Yeah, but your, you know, your match is of no consequence, basically. So next up, we're going to have, uh, well... Okay, well, I'll send you the map in the top left when you're watching a pro match. Flashpoint map is amazing. I know it's a minor thing, but it looks awesome. You mean the HUD? I could probably take a look at that later. But obviously, I can't show it in the stream, otherwise I'll get banned, basically. Flashpoint immediately DCMA claims me. Anyways, here we go. So we're going into the next pot of news. And this is actually quite sad. It's like Hunden's kind of, you know, leaving as well. Is Alex Lee's Vitality. So if you guys don't know, Alex left Vitality because of personal reasons. He got a whole bunch of... Wait, Na'Vi's number one? To be fair, they probably deserve it. Simple played incredible CS. But we haven't got to Katowice yet. We're getting Katowice soon, okay? So Alex Lee's Vitality. So Alex left Vitality... Oh yeah, Navi's number two. Crazy, Navi's number two. I can see the HLTV rank rankings here. Navi will be one number one next week. Yeah, we can see it. it's here when the rankings update. Oh, okay, that's why you think Navi's gonna be one number one. So pretty much, basically, this is really sad. Like seriously, this is really really sad. So Alex quit the team. The main reason why he quit the team is because of basically homesickness and too much travel and too much mental stress. And he had to quit Vitality. It wasn't because, you know, it wasn't because of anything, you know, like he got benched or anything like that. Like Alex was a solid player for Vitality. Like Alex was that second string to the bow. Then Zylu being the main, you know, you know, you know how they have like a ballista and then have like, you know, secondary cannons or whatever. Literally, that was Alex. He was like the secondary person that they could, you know, pop in and he would get a bunch of kills. And Zyra, of course, being, you know, the fucking bull the Ballista Bullet itself, where he could, like, literally win games with his own back. And Alex was just, you know, the second guy, and he was the IGL. I, th I think he was the IGL? Yeah, he was the IGL. And he was, like, the second guy here. Not the first time, happens, and it won't be the last. I'm going to say that. It won't be the last, given that the scene's becoming way, way more active, and players are being asked to travel to, to Copenhagen, to LA, to fucking whatever, and whatever. Shocks kicks it, joins a game, kicks the IGL. He actually wasn't kicked he quit but ironically enough as you say that as you say that it has happened before where shocks joins and the igl quits <laughs> with all respect to alex did not know he was signing up for when he started to play pro cs yeah a lot of people don't know what they're signing up for like you come into cs like I'll, t I'll, I'll just pretend to be like you know a guy coming to cs be like you know oh you know oh i'm gonna join some new french team okay we're just gonna be playing french lands Gonna be in Europe and that's it, you know. We're not gonna do anything crazy. We're not gonna go to, you know, outside Europe. And then Vitality, you know, they win a few tournaments. They they become best in Europe, and then suddenly they're being invited for lands in fucking Australia, lands in fucking LA, and you know, probably may have been a bit too much for Alex. And like, you know, Alex probably didn't expect that when he joined Vitality initially with you know MBK and a few others, because most of those guys were over the hill, and you know. And Apex IG now, South Shocks always wants to take IGL, so it wouldn't make sense. Oh, true. Ah, nah, nah, crazy, dude. They would have said they kicked Alex. But to be honest, like, if they wanted to kick Alex, what could they kick Alex on, to be honest? Because Alex was one of the best IGLs you're going to get. Apex is the captain, not an IGL. Oh, then, oh yeah, that's what they're going to have to get IGL. So no, they wouldn't. Yeah, no, they wouldn't. But Alex would be a top-tier IGL for anyone. I have a feeling that if Alex wants to not travel so much, he'll join Endpoint. I reckon he will join Endpoint. They'll kick the IGL of Endpoint, or like a low-performing player, and bring in Alex, I reckon. You know, that's what I'm going to say. I think they'll bring in Alex to Team Endpoint, the all-British lineup, 
and he'd be probably happier there. Like, you know, having his uh, already having his five seconds of fame in Vitality. Well, not really five seconds in a draw preview term, but you know, he's had the uh, pro tour basically, you know, status, and you know, it didn't, didn't feel like it was for him. But I reckon it would probably join Endpoint or another British team as well, and just chill out in ESA Advanced and ESL Pro League, or you know, the MDL, or even you know, potentially might even like go coach a team instead. That's you know, a lower level team and try to bring them up. And that's what he might think might do as well. But we'll see what happens with Alex. And it's really, really unfortunate that he left. Isn't Captain IGL the same thing? Nah, it isn't. You can be a scheduler and a leader, but not actually be the IGL in the game. There's a few teams that have that as well. So it's not that thing. They're looking at Haji for a replacement. But in the end, they replaced him with this uh, known, little known French guy called Musuta. So he's known in the French seat. I didn't contact the Frenchies. I contacted Kippa and uh, Nell about who this guy was, because I have no fucking clue who this guy is. Like, I have no idea who he is. No idea. I'm like, um, why is this unknown French guy coming in here? And he's like, oh, he's very, very good at the French lands. That's what I said. Very, very good. Top tier player. Always high ADR. Always high KDR as well. And he's been playing around with the Vitality Boys for a bit as well. And no one has ever fucking heard of him outside the French scene. No one. And it's kind of like when uh, Renegades picked up, or 100 Thieves now picked up Gratis Faction and Liaz. I think only many people only heard of Liaz, given what he did to Cloud9. So if you didn't know with Liaz, Liaz almost led by himself at the feet of Cloud9. We started that made a frag me of FPL, come on, so invite the Vitality. Yeah, he's actually done more than that as well, according to Nell. According to Nell, when he got ever invited to FPL, he had done more than that. And he's been playing in a lot of French lands as well. So it's France's well-kept secret, it seems, because no one knows who he is until just now. And I think that's what they need. They need more fragging power as well, because I think Shocks, as Crazy said, Shocks might become IGL. So this allows them to have more fragging power. And at the same time as well, they really do need the fragging power, because... I can tell you now, losing Alex is massive, massive for this team. And they need something to really back up Zyru if Zyru has an off day. Because Zyru seems to have an off day against a certain Australian team that has gratification in it. Okay, so that sometimes, you know, Zyru just, you know, the only bad game Zyru has ever had is against 100 Thieves. So they need someone to beat the five Australians, okay? You know, who, who will win? Five top tier French blokes. Or five casual Australians. Seems like the casual Australians always win, okay? <laughs> five, ca have you seen the memes about that? Like in the MDIs and WoW, when um the Australian team won, it was like five pro EU players. It's like got five Australian guys drinking Fosters versus five normal Australian blokes who will win. <laughs> that was hilarious. But this is, one, this is one of the memes as well that I introduced with the French teams. But, you know, basically, so it's going to be RPK, Apex, Zyru, Shox, Misuta, and XTQ as coach. I'm going to say it's a pretty big, good pickup as well. I'm going to say RPK is very, very good still. Like, he's incredibly clutch. Like, when I casted him in Epicenter, that guy was crazy clutch. Like, he won about three to four rounds against Mouse. All because RPK gets, like, one or two kills every time. Simba would have been number one in 2019. He might be number one in 2020. Because he's actually playing, playing full stop. I don't think they're trash yet. You gotta see how that team works out. Like the only reason why I went after Luminar this week about their roster changes is because they they changed three players and two of them were playing well. Like two of them were playing quite well and they changed three players, which is just confusing to me. Like they brought in Peter, Friend, and Jed, and they got rid of Stomp. And I'm like sitting there like Stomp was winning you things. Like Stomp was a quality author. I have no idea why he got rid of him. Like, it's just Alex for this new French guy. Nothing really has changed in that core of that team yet. So it's a bit early to say Vitality are done, you know? Winning episode was the worst thing that happened to them. Why are you saying winning rushing tournaments are bad now? But they won, they won Vitality. You know, Vitality won quite well in Epicenter. And they did play better than Mouse Sports in the end. Epicenter was a dead tournament. Uh, you know, the team quality wasn't there. I can agree with that. But it was actually pretty, pretty, you know, competitive. EG in a slump. Or oh, EG was still pretty decent, to be honest. Despite being in a slump. 
But anyway. Gave them false hope? No, I think Vitality are up there. Vitality are up there. Like, if Vitality are definitely a tier one team. We just have to see how this all shakes out in the end, you know? All shakes out. What other teams were there? There was Forza Virtus Pro, Heroic, E-Home. Don't really care how much E-Home they went out. Na'Vi, uh, Mouse Sports, and Vitality. So, yeah. There's actually a lot of teams in that tournament. It's pretty... I'm not sure why E-Home went... To be honest, like, why E-Home was invited to the tournament. Give it... Oh, not, not invited. They got through the Asian qualifiers. But they were so outclassed at the tournament. It wasn't even funny. Like, the only game they did well in was getting back at Vitality on Inferno, and that's about it. Gave them false hope. Oh, I think, I think Eva 4 and the RL said that. But I think Vitality won that. It's a good, you know, good tournament win. Like, you know, you take any win as a tournament win. Like, you don't really go, oh, man, they, they won that tournament. They're done. See you later. It's just like, you know, you know, we won a tournament. You know, very few teams win a tournament. <laughs> Anyways, next up, guys, we're going to do the qualifiers of Flashpoint. So basically, Orglis, so Wardell and Co. beat Chaos 2 1 in the BO3 today. And I'm, I was really, really happy to see this because Wardell, he recently got surgery and he's back in this and they beat Chaos. And they get a flashpoint spot and they are still fucking Orglis. <laughs> I have no idea how to steal Orglis, by the way, at this point. Because they got some great players, okay? They got some great players. They got... Okay, I was going to say they have Smooya, but I'm like, that's chaos. They got, you know, FNS, good, semi-decent IGL. Like, you know, they've got decent IGLs here, so I'm not even sure why. Wonder who picks up Orglis? Oh, I wonder who. I wonder if an eSports Org will register them as Orglis, and an Orglis will have forever be Orglis. They beat Chaos last night, yeah, I agree. So Orglis, they won an overpass. That's a big win as well. For a team that doesn't have an Org, that's a big win. Always, always remember this. Like, if a team wins overpass against another team, that's a big win. CLG, we're looking for a team. Could be CLG, actually. CLG could come back in here. So, as you see here, there's Wardell. Wardell didn't perform that great, but Infinite, Sun Rosa, Yay, and FNS. Like, this team's looking pretty good here. And they've been, you know, some superstars like Smooya, Steel, Ben and Cam, Vanity. But they played pretty awful, actually. Look at this, that. Like, they played actually pretty badly compared to the other guys. But I think it's more Orgles playing better, to be honest. Great CS, I have to say. Well, probably the first map would have been, you know, pretty boring, given that August would have won quite simply. But these last two maps would have been insane to watch, you know, 16-12, 16-11. Like, if, don't get me wrong, guys. 16-11 is only close, close on Inferno because Inferno is a very, very hard map to uh, be close on, given that it snowballs very, very often. So 16-14 on Inferno is actually quite rare because basically the teams with the rifles generally win the rounds. Wardell's just back from injury too. Yeah, Wardell had surgery just like the week before, yeah. Because Wardell was talking about to me after I cast his matches that like he's going to for surgery. I'm like, what? Like, shit, man. And he couldn't stream for like a week because he had like a bit of vertigo and dizziness. But he's able to turn up for this and, you know, still be semi-decent, 70 ADR and above one rating as well. But he did lose against Smooya, but that's to be expected. Should have had a chat of trash talk till they started losing. Dude, all American teams trash talk, man. I remember watching the MDL NA LAN between Rise Nation and, what was it, Saw Gaming, which is basically Triumph now. Oh my fucking god, man. It was like this every round with the uh, trash talk. They're like, you suck, you suck! And then it's going back down again, you know, like literally giving each other shit from like each side of the LAN, bro. And um, when Saw Gaming started winning, basically like, oh, it's not talking anymore. Yeah, I can survive to get air, dude. They did that in MDL as well, where they're like, like literally saying dumb shit. In the ASL Pro League, Stewie, my god, talking about trash talk, Stewie should never ever trash talk ever again, man. He is not good at trash talking, okay? He is not good at trash talking. And every time I heard him trash talk, I'm just like <sighs> cringing inside because it was that bad. But uh, who's good at trash talk? Kaden is very good at trash talk. Smoothie <laughs> just screeches. <laughs> But you know it's funny though. Definitely Kaden. Kaden's very, very good at trash talk. And there's someone in EG who's really good at trash talk as well. I'm trying to remember who they are. I know Kaden's good at trash talk, but Stewie's really terrible at trash talk. He is really terrible. He did it. Hurt my ears. Thank you, Smoothie. <laughs> Stewie's the vocal one. Yeah, he is. Anyways, we're gonna go to the next one, which is gonna be big. They beat Harvu, and you know how unhappy I'm. This I wanted Harvu to get the spot. Ah. 
Tarek, that's right. Tarek, he's very good at trash talk. I wanted Harvey to get this spot. You know, one of my favorite teams is Harvey as well, okay? Because I met the co-owner and owner at DreamHack Winter. And it was also Rosie River's favorite team as well. <laughs> and I wanted these guys to win because they did so much. Like, if you guys don't know, these guys were one of the teams that got, uh, you know how ESL Pro League shrunk to 24 teams? Harvey was one of these teams that got screwed over. Like, Harvey went had a mad lower bracket run through MDL Season 33 to get to the finals of E4, say. They lost 3 nothing, and 3 nothing was on two of them were on close maps. You know, they both you know, got to 10 rounds each. And, you know, they went ESL relegation, okay? They were going in. All the teams were dead other than Sprout, Spirit, and Harvu. You know how many boil loves it that makes that eek sound? That's what Smooth sound like. Oh, God. Shit, that would have made anyone shiver. Like, nails on a chalkboard. I won't air that yet. Crazy, I'll look at that later. But anyways, Big gets the next spot. To be expected, to be honest. Like, Big have been playing incredibly well. They've been stomping all these teams at bo 3s They stomped Renegades. They stomped Heroic. It is, unfortunately, here, it's just inevitable. Like, it's just inevitable. We're big, we're going to qualify. Very, very close matchups here. Like, 16-12, 16-13. And Slowey. This is actually the first time where Slowey's performed well, but Harvey have not won the series. This is like a big outlier where Slowey has been, you know, positive rating and they've not won. Picture that. They've not won. And that is rare. That is like the 10%. Now, we're going to get to Katowice. Actually, we're not going to get to Katowice. We're going to go to quick update of the players. So if you guys don't know, someone asked me when Game of Legion playing Nordavind, where Rubino is. So Rubino's out of injury, so they got Harry to stand in for him. And that's pretty much it. That's a quick answer to that. Nothing's happening to Rubinio. He's just out of injury. Harry's just coming in to replace the stand-in because, of course, the rest of the old lineup hauls Zerk back of Dignitas, so they can't ask him to come in. And Harry's the only one that's not, you know, contracted to anyone, and he comes back in for a stint. So, you know, basically, he's no stranger. He played with them during the second half of 2019, got them to MDL, and so he's just a stand-in at the moment while Rubinio is injured. Rubinio with that lovely beard there, that lovely, lovely, lovely beard. But anyways, we're going to go to the next game, which is going to be Na'Vi beats, so like, Na'Vi wins, G2, and Katowice. And they won a crushing 3 nothing. And where's the picture of Simple? Just, you know, Simple is just smug. So smug. You know, he's just, that, that's all you need to know about that tournament. Is that's the only thing you need to know about that tournament? Because this guy fucking went off. He literally shat on everyone in that tournament. Like, Boomich as well. He also stepped up as well. And Jesus, holy moly. Like, look at this domination. Like... 16-4 on Nuke, 16-13 on Dust 2, that's not, that's a close game, 16-2 on Mirage, and then look at this, Boomich on Nuke, Boomich like completely smashed him on Nuke, and you know, Simple, Boomich, Flamey, like everyone popped up, look at that rating from Boomich, 1.68, Simple on 1.52, like G2, all they could do there was just sit there and take it, because they couldn't do anything, Perfecto broke a record for his major land. That's pretty good as well. Like, Perfecto as well. Perfecto's a nice fit from Simon, I believe. Nice fit into this Na'Vi lineup. Like, all they need was just a rifler that could do things, and that's it. Perfecto, definitely a rifler. I know they were after Flit as well. Uh, Na'Vi, Boomich, 28. Yeah, 28 kills in first half of Nuke. And, of course, he didn't get the MVP because Simple had been consistent more out of the tournament here. So, basically, and after that, Simple... Perfecto, zero deaths and a half. Yeah, that's because they never went to his fucking bomb site. I heard about that. I heard about that. That Perfecto never died because they never went to his bomb site. And he was like, the only one left always is just like, okay, you know, okay, okay. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah, they did. They went to it three times, like something ridiculous. Like it was like either two or three times and Perfecto won on the jewels. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's like the meme with Hatchy. You know when Hatchy has a meme, you know, like, you know, how to beat Fnatic, one, go T-side, two, don't buy Kriegs, three, you fucked up and brought Kriegs, four, bro now Broline's fucking you, you can't get on site or even win rounds, six, your mother was right, you shouldn't have never left school. <laughs> that meme is perfecto in a nutshell, okay? But, you know, here we go. So, simple, he got MVP, look at that smile, he's happy. He's happy as Larry, okay? He's very, very happy. Um, you know, super happy with that. I should have been careful before clicking on that photo, just in case someone, like, you know, dropped the uh, end bomb or whatever. But, you know, here we go. So, you know, he's done it. Simple's got the MVP, and he's super happy with it. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about the CIS, CIS Minor Qualifier, which will be custom later today. So, 
Basically, if you guys don't know, here's a bracket. So Forze, they won, lost to Windstrike. Windstrike actually had the hardest bracket, I'm gonna say, to get to the uh to get the Asia minor spot, which I'm just surprised with. Because Windstrike had to take on Hellraisers, then they had to take on Forze, and they won both games 2-0. So all credit to Windstrike. Look at that path. Like that path is like a evil path. If like you want to get to an Asian minor, you have to beat a team already in MDL when you're not in MDL. You have to beat a team that's in the ESL Pro League. And you know, you gotta give hats off to Windstrike here for doing, you know, for going to clean 2-0 to get to the next round. The youngsters had an easier path, given that Namiga drops their first series to I win, and the youngsters went in 2-0, 2-0. It could have been very dicey here. He has Gambit Youngsters almost dropped their map pick to El Quebec. So Hard Legion to beat Team Unique 2-1, and they lost to Simon 2-1. This is actually a really close lineup here, this bracket, because all these teams aren't in the MDL ESL Pro League, and they're all close together here. Had a G2, one plant bomb, do die, freak. Oh my god. <laughs> Estralis, by the way. This one's actually a really hard bracket. I'm actually surprised that Prosto actually lost to a Sparta here, but I did expect Spirit to just cruise through to nothing and Spirit's up for as well. So the four teams that have qualified for minors is Windstrike, Youngster, the Gambit, Team, Simon, and Spirit. So what we're going to be having tonight, guys, we're going to be having Speedrunners vs Hellraisers, then the Widower versus Sparta, and then whoever wins that will qualify. Then it'll be Namiga v El Quivet, then Hard Legion versus the winner here, and they'll go through. Unique v FBG, and then whoever here versus each other, and they go through. And this is going to be the hardest bracket ever. Proso v SG Pro, and then it'll be 4Z v Pro 100. In before Bot Bird cries when he loses. I reckon Simon's probably pretty much got a really easy bracket here, I've got to say. Like, no, Simon's already gone through, so he can't complain, Norbert. Simon's already through. Or is he part of Hard Legion? But, like, you know, to be honest, so, like, I'm going to say, like, the, the top three here have a very easy bracket to go through, okay? Like, have an incredibly easy bracket. And this bracket is just the most bullshit one. Like, whoever wins this versus Forze, okay? You know, it's, it's like one of those things you sit and go, like, Oh, you know, they get easy. Oh, they're an easy race. They're an easy race. And you go to your course, like a fucking mountain, like 10 sky high, volcanoes everywhere. And like sitting here, is this fair? Is this fair? Yeah, Pro Rancher is called Prosto. Yeah, Prosto. Prosto. Like, you know, like Prosto gets really fucked here. And that's all we're going to say. They get literally fucked. Anyways, guys, let's go into the MDL. So we're going to go through, I think it was uh, not week six. It was in Deve. Great, look at these ads here. Prosto is owned by Zeus, I know. That's why I said the Zeus or owned org. So we're gonna go through here. So basically, Rooster basically, I casted this game by the way. Rooster basically dumped Incept. Avant beats Ground Zero, so Avant still hanging on to that number one seed. Trying to beat Airborne and try to basically send, send Airborne to a tailspin, forcing them to fight for relegation. Skyfire defeated Esper, and this defeat, like Esper losing, basically relegated them here. Gonna be a good week to watch CSGO to do minor quarters qualifiers. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna be there's gonna be so much CSGO games, it's not gonna be funny. Like, even after the minor qualifiers, I'm not actually sure pronouncing the names, Otsana. There's gonna be so much MDL. Like, I'm gonna tell you now, MDLs can be so stacked, because this is the last week of MDL. And look at the EU League. No one's played their full 17 yet. Teams still haven't even played half their matches. So that week, this next week, is gonna be filled with fucking games. Like, I can just feel it now. Every single day is going to be brim, filled to the brim with fucking games of teams trying to finish their 17 games to finish it up. So as you see here, basically Skyfire basically relegated Esper. Uh, Ground Zero beat Formidable, completely expected. And they also put Formidable into the BO freeze in the pro season. Um, Esper, once again, being confirmed, they are indeed relegated. Inset being Esper and, you know, Inset desperately needs that win to make sure they don't get relegated. They don't get put into BO freeze themselves. Avant winning MDL would be pretty close between Avant and Order, but Avant will probably get number one seed at this point. And I sleep losing to Fury. You guys watched that with me in the uh, yesterday. You guys watched that with me casting it. Epic OT with I think it was uh, Dell winning it and getting the bomb defuse just in time. It's just <laughs> as it is, I have the hard time keeping up with all the CSGO that's playing. Oh, don't worry, my dude. Don't worry about these results. I've already talked about these results previously. We just talked about this result and Inset v Rooster here, and that's about it. So, you know, basically, Avant v. Airborne, I talked to Nutters, who was the other caster as well for Avant v. Airborne. He said Avant were dominant. Airborne won very few rounds, and that's about it. We'll talk about the uh, next uh, things. No, it's about Snooks. It's about Snooky, because Snooky is Dutch. The guy the guy in the BRP called Snooks, he's, he's Dutch. I hate having to decide what caster to watch. Dude, 
Just turn them all on and have them all at the same time and have them all mixed together to form a supercaster. So next we get is going to be Rooster v. Ice Leap, Avant v. Paradox, Paradox v. Fury, and Order v. Ground Zero. So if Fury want to help out Ice Leap, Avant has to defeat Paradox, Fury defeats Fury defeats Paradox, Ice Leap, if they do beat Rooster, they'll be in the playoffs. And then we order the ground zero. This will be another big match to look at as well for the AUMDL. This will probably decide where the seeding is going to be. If ground zero lose, they're going to be seven for six seed at best. If order lose, well, they're going to be second seed confirmed basically after that. Next up, we're going to talk about the e uh, NAMDL, but look at how much NAMDL has been played. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, look at all these goddamn matches. Like, not even kidding. Like, you know when I talked about the, um, like, so many teams are going to be playing? Like, look at this for the NA League. Almost a match every fucking day. And look how many matches on the 4th. So these are all the matches we have to go through. All these fucking matches. Like, I'm not even kidding. That's about 28, 29 matches, or even 30 matches in a goddamn week. So I casted these three games here. So Bad News Bears won, beat two. They were very crushing defeats. Like, Bad News Bears were very just on top of the game here. And Swords Danny. They, they, it was close at the start, then Swallow Denny just went to cruise control and just ran over Oceanus effectively. So now Bad News Bears continues his, you know, winning streak. Triumph, another team that was unfortunately unlucky with the ASL Pro League. They defeated Miffing and Oceanus, making really a charge for that Pro League spot. There's another team that I like, Recon 5, but they replaced, um, they replaced Odorous. jean Pierre should get picked up by an NA team. He's still insane, but he's got a VAC ban. No one's going to touch, touch him if he has a VAC ban. Like, Steel is literally, literally a, uh, like, an exception. The massive exception of anyone being picked up. So, as you see, American League, I'm going to say Bad News Bears and Triumph are probably going to be the main two players in this league that will probably win it. But the other teams, like E United, for example, they've fallen off a, 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 a cliff, basically. Mythic's actually in contention for finals, funnily enough. And, um... Just, you know, all these games have been happening so, so quick. Triumph even played three games today, if you believe that. Look at all these games from Triumph. Like, insane. Like, they're, they're really just speeding it up. Even Triumph got two games tomorrow, and they just want to speed through all their games. Flom is amazing. Yeah, they, they've done a really good job this season, Mythic. Like, Mythic last season, they had to fight for relegation. But now they're, you know, a lot better here. They've been winning a lot of games against a lot of these teams, and they're really crushing it at the moment. And well, they've got a lot more games here, as you see here, like all these games, like holy moly, like look at all these games here. As you guys can see here, I've been looking for microphones as well. Now getting to the last part, which is going to be the EU MDL. And we're going to go through the matches I casted previously. So this is when Illuminar made their roster switch. And Illuminar, like they lost to the Unicorns. And this is not good. They lost to the Unicorns. And then they lose it. They get close to Pact. Then they lose to the Riders. But look at this. Jumpy is ESL banned. No, Jumpy is VAC banned. He's banned from the majors. And then Unicorns upset Wizzo Cacao as well. And it means Unicorns can act are not being directly relegated anymore. So AGO demolished Spirit. This was actually a huge upset. We had AGO won 16-4 against Spirit. Massive upset. And AGO won five T side rounds in a row. And that's strange. Strange for AGO, who are notably a good CT side. And that's a rare loss of spirit here. So no other notable upsets. Game of Legion taking down Nordovin. I did cast this game as well. That was fun. That was fun to watch. Dennis. I think it was Rusty and Dennis starting that game. And then Spirit. They won the next two games. They actually defeated Sprout here. Spirit probably a big game to win. They knocked down Chapolino. And Luminar did beat Singularity. And Singularity is one of those teams that are really up and down. Like they can beat a team like Sprout, for example, 16-11 here. And then lose to a team like Illuminar. And AJ to continue the winning ways. I think AJ might be a sneaky, sneaky team to get into playoffs, in my opinion. I reckon they should watch out for AJ here. Because AJ could probably sneak into the playoffs. What do you guys think about that? Do you think AJ will make MDL EU playoffs? Because they're doing they're doing a good job so far. They've been the teams they've needed to beat. We have ESL events like Dreamhack and Flashpoint. If it was enough to win to have Jumpy on the roster, who's gonna pick him up though? That's a big question. So Game of Legion took care of Illuminati, I casted that. And Sprout beat with like a cow that was really close. Jacqueline decimated Illuminar. And you know, Unicorns of Love beat Pact. Like this is getting scary here. Riders beat Singularity. Now the game today is gonna be, you know, another another 
Polish Derby, AJ vs. Gamer Legion. This will probably be a game to watch, in my opinion. And lastly, looks like a Cal v. AGO. So, guys, I haven't got anything else for today for CSGO. Um, I've actually talked a lot, actually. So, now we're going to talk about caster tips, okay? So, I thought I'd you know, just do a section about caster tips and stuff like that, and how to cast and what to do. So, my number one caster tip I'm going to say now, because everyone keeps reminding about it, is get a good mic. And... No, Unicorns of Love were in some, some, some sort of scandal. They were just bottom, like rock bottom by miles. They were getting absolutely beaten by every single team until quite recently. And um, one of the games where they lost like 16-3, I basically said, just take a boot camp, take the week off, reschedule all your MDLs and just have a boot camp. Because you guys, if you guys don't have this boot camp, you're going to get directly relegated. Yes, I think they did back in the old days that they were, they were accused of throwing a game. I have, Someone told me about it, but they didn't fill me in with the details. But it was a long time ago. Komodo mic is good. Yeah, Komodo uses the... Um, Komodo told me his mic specs. And it's the same one that uh, December told me to get. It's the same one that Squid told me to get. Cloud Booster. Go LXR. Go LXR with a uh, Shure SMB7B. And that's what they that's what they recommended me to get. And that, that mic stuff can be pricey as hell. But it's going to save you so much. You, you do two to three years of casting at home. And what is it? Like... Five hundred dollars a a year, you know, you know, you know what costs five hundred dollars a year? What costs more than that? Your goddamn petrol bill, okay, your gas bill, okay, your coffee. If you have a coffee every day, then Mike is gonna last you for three years at least. And I gotta get a boom stick. I gotta go boom. I gotta boom back here, boom arm, all ready to go for it. But I gotta, you know, just squeeze with a go X, a go XLR. Cause I don't have an XLR mic. I have a Blue Yeti. I have a Blue Yeti USB mic. So we definitely need the uh, preamp, the mixer and stuff like that, and go LXR as well. And then I'll just play around with it, see what works. And that's one cast tip is definitely get a good microphone. The Blue Yeti is a very, very good budget microphone. It's a lot better than the others, and you can use filters to tone it in to make you sound good. I spent $400 on, a, on coffee a month. Yeah, exactly. You know, the new microphone setup I'm going to buy is literally only going to be $1,600. And that's with the mixer, that's with the cloud boost. And that's with the uh, Shure mic. And it's going to be the wiring as well. I quit coffee. Yeah, it's $1,600 it's $1, Australian. Australian. Okay. If you want to convert that to POM money, just times it by, just divide it by two. Okay. If you want to get converted to American money, just times it by like 1.5 or 1.6. Oh, no, divide it by 1.5 or 1.6 and you get your how much it costs. I have enough money. I have, I have, a, I have the budget. Okay. I have the budget. Are you nuts, dude? I fucking make my salary is almost my salary is almost uh, one point five times that. Okay, after tax, if I had my gross salary, it would be two times before tax. Okay, I earned that in a fortnight, two times before tax. So I can I've got the fuck you money there. Okay, and I'm very very good at my finances. Like if you want to know that I have a ten grand backup, ten grand backup on my offset if I get injured or can't work. Okay, and I've got a whole bunch of sick leave as well. So I've got that back up there. I've got even insurance as well to even back me up even further. But yeah. I'm not, I know you're not trying to stress me, but I'm just saying you know, I'm very, very good at my money. Like, I don't fuck around. I don't live paycheck to paycheck like some people do, okay? Like, I'm very, very responsible with it. Everyone's, everyone's like looking at me and be like, dude, like, you have so much fucking savings. New Mark's investment, exactly. But what he's trying to say is like, it is quite expensive. It is a big investment. And of course, I can basically claim it as a deduction and basically depreciate it instantly for a tax deduction. Oh no, it's not a mic. It's a mic, the preamp, and the uh, cloud boost. It's all of them put together. It's not just a mic. The mic itself is about 600 bucks. 600, 700 bucks. Just in case you guys are wondering. But you know, it's it's that much. The Blue Yeti, if you want a budget mic, you want a first mic with the Blue Yeti here as I touch it, that's only about 200, 300 bucks. It's a USB mic. Um, you can put it onto a boom. Um, it's pretty easy to use. If you want to start, just use a Blue Yeti. Another one is get the Reaper VST plugins. You can get, there's a YouTube video out there from Proto Magical Girl from the Speedrunner people. She runs a very, very good tutorial on how to use it. So there's these things where you can basically eliminate all your background noise. Like at the moment, you can't hear, you can't hear at all. But I have a PC running in the background. Can you hear anything in the background? You can't hear that fan noise. Basically, that's how VST Reaper plugins work. You can consider the background noise. You can delete it. 
They can't hear it. You can't hear it. It's gone. I've even got aircon running in that room there. Am I making extra from casting? No, I'm not. I've only I've only casted for 50 bucks Australian. That's it. That's all I've received from casting. And that was for me casting Queen Banja Luca. And the guys there, the Bosnians, were very, very good with payment. Like, they were very, very good. Like, within the two weeks when they found my email, they would contact me going, oh, dude, 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 you need to invoice us through PayPal. Like, they were telling me to invoice them. And they were very, very good and very, very, you know, quick with the money switch as well. And I do consider casting work. You know, it's just a hobby and work at the same time. But I don't feel real as work work where you think it's boring, it's a chore. You know, I love, you know, casting and stuff like that. And I do want to make money out of it. You know, I do want to go see the world, be a cast at a dream hack. I put my name down at Dream Act, put my name down at Flashpoint. Every fucking time, like there's a competition coming out, that email comes through, okay? That email goes through to that org, being like, you know, I can cast for you guys. I don't want to cast for specific teams, because I don't want to be contract with specific teams to cast all their games. Mainly because for AU, some of the games are too early for me to cast. And sometimes for EU, the games are too late to cast. And for NA as well. You know, NA is too early for me. So I can't really, like, if I get contracted to a team to cast all their games, you know, there's going to be times where I miss one and I don't, you know, want to do that. If you get know what I mean? I just don't want to do that. I don't want to lock myself to a team. But there's a lot of teams that, you know, if I'm going to go down on a track, if I have to in the end, there's a lot of teams that I would like to approach to cast. Yeah, you know, your dad's probably right about that. Another caster tip as well I'm going to say is, is that you should commentate like you're on radio. Always commentate like radio and also improve on building stories, okay? That's a big thing in CSGO. And one of the feedback that I got from one of the, uh, it, ironically enough, this was firstly said by one of the, my, one of the teammates I know, one of the guys I know in E United, Dazzle, her, his girlfriend said this, was that make sure you know what the fuck you're talking about. Study the team, study the last few matches. If you've watched them, refer to that. Because if you don't study the matches, a lot of people don't like it when the casters get things wrong. Okay, a lot of a lot of players don't like when the casters get things wrong, or have no idea about the teams they're commentating in front of. If you say it first up, it's fine. But if you don't and you try to think you know about the teams, you look like a dumbass. Okay, you look like a dumbass. So just just please look at the teams you're going to be casting before you do cast them and what they do and how they've been going in that league as well. Like, took it, take a look at the wins, losses. Take a look at their recent matches. Maybe even cast, watch a demo of their team as well. This is mainly for t people, casters who are new to the scene. And they haven't exactly um, known any of the teams in live. As well, before you even start casting. By the way. Is that, um... What is it? You should be casting demos before you start casting live games. You want to get used to, to all the callouts that the uh, the uh, casters do, and you want to get used to the fast pace and action and how quick you're gonna to have to call out you know, where X person has died, Z person has died, and it gives you when you get to the real thing, it allows you to just be so much better. Even though the demo doesn't have any camera movements, so you can't move the camera in demo. It's actually stuck on the person that it is. It's on permanent auto director. It gives you an idea of how a game's gonna be like. So just picking a demo, let's just say of HLTV, for example. Like, I just pick any MDL demo. Even go to ESA itself, pick a demo from there. You can even cast a pug game as well for practice. There's, like, a lot of avenues out there. Like, a lot of people complain as... Um, the, only, the only people who complain is Observer, where they have to lash themselves on a cast, and a cast can just say simply no to an Observer. But casters have no excuse to not cast a game, given how open CSGO is. One thing that casters do that piss me off is when a caster says 18 gets shit on in an eco. Yeah, um, I only say that very, I only say that very few times where a team gets completely obliterated within seconds. Like if a team, let's just say a team like A, like the team on eco with Glocks runs through hut and there's two guys with an MP9. Yes, I'm going to say that the team got completely obliterated if they all die in three seconds. Like I'm going to say that because that's what happens. On eco, it's like the team gets completely obliterated by MP9s in three seconds. You know, that's a appropriate comment. The thing is, like, if they beat them in a long, drawn-out game in the, in the eco rounds, like, maybe not. You know, you're, it depends on what the situation is, really. With casting as well, make sure you try to learn all the players' names. And if you don't know any of the players' names, like, you're a bit confused, always ask chat, okay? Even ask the teams as well before the match. Because the teams before the match, especially the smaller teams... They will tell you how to pronounce their names, okay? 
Like I was say, the Copenhagen Flames, they were one of the first teams where they got all their fans in, same with Endpoint. And they all told me, you know, like, oh, no, Roger is actually Roy. Call him Roy. And that's what they said. You know, they told me how to pronounce the names whilst in the game. And, you know, I took that on. on. Obviously, I take it on in the game as well as MDL, as you guys may have noticed. That, you know, I sit there being like, you know, eh, Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. Trying to get myself used to it, so I say it over the fucking other name I was pronouncing. Anyways, guys, that's going to be it for Chill Time with Jose. If you guys take these, you know, caster tips in board, there'll be more of them each time. And I'll go through, like, a worked example to, you know, show you, like, good casting, um, little tips and nudges that you can do as well. And as I keep saying, just build storylines. Just create storylines. Have quibs. Have funny jokes. Keep the stream entertained. Like, sometimes people don't like a fully professional caster on, like, MDL games. The other games are good as well. But, you know. That, that, that's pretty much it, guys. So, that's it for Jose, uh, Chill Time with Jose today for the CSGO section. Subscribe below to my YouTube. And check my other socials out, which will be below in the video below. Hope you guys see you guys next time for the CSGO Chill Time with Jose. See you guys later.